Hello and welcome to the local history of Northern Kentucky. My name is Kate and today we're going to be taking a look at the history of some of the notable restaurants in the area over the years. And this will feature photos from the library's Faces and Places database. So first we'll begin with Pompilio's and the history of this Newport restaurant dates back to 1933 and it was open under the name of Pompilio House. And Colonel John Pompilio and his wife Johanna founded the restaurant and their three sons, Michael, Matthew, and Daniel, also worked there. And when the Italian restaurant opened, an order of spaghetti was 25 cents and ravioli was 30 cents. So it's a little bit difficult to see here, but um, the food prices are hanging there in the window in the background. And Pompilio's became the first restaurant in Kentucky to receive a liquor license when Prohibition came to an end. Um, but then a year later, in 1934, they were refused renewal of the liquor license, and um, John Pompilio was reprimanded by the Newport City Commissioners, um, and that was according to a Cincinnati Enquirer article from the time. And he was arrested on April 16th of that year because police had been called down to the restaurant to put a stop to a disturbance one night. And when they arrived, they found that Pompilio was serving beer to customers, even though it was past midnight. So he was arrested for violating the midnight closing ordinance. And the people who were participating in the fight were charged with disorderly conduct. So when he was arraigned in Newport Police Court, um, Pompilio was charged $15, and then he had to appear before the city commissioners to defend his application for renewal of the liquor license. And there were several witnesses that testified in um, support of him. And then early in the restaurant's history, they also experienced a couple of robberies and attempted robberies. Um, in June of 1935, it was reported that burglars were frightened away from John Pompilio's Cafe in Newport when his son Matthew saw two men trying to jimmy a rear door. And Matthew fired several shots at the thieves and they escaped by jumping over a fence. And then in 1939, Pompilio reported that thieves broke into a rear window and they looted the restaurant of $130 and $10 worth of cigarettes. And in December 1944, John Pompilio reported that he had four cases of whiskey stolen from his restaurant and he told a police lieutenant that he saw a man carrying the whiskey from the restaurant's basement but thought that the man had purchased it. Um, this picture was taken in 1941 and shows how the dining room of the restaurant looked at that time. And sitting at the table in the foreground are John and Johanna Pompilio. And another important part of the restaurant's early history involved baseball. The restaurant had a baseball team and they received hundreds of mentions in the Kentucky Post, especially over the first 20 years of the restaurant's history. And this photo of the team was taken in 1957. Um, some other teams in the community included Rich's Cafe, Brock's Furniture, and the Friars Boys Club. And again, um, John and Johanna's sons, Matthew, Michael, and Daniel helped to run the restaurant. Um, and Daniel's pictured on the left. So um, John Pompilio died in 1965 and the three sons held ownership for the next 20 years. And the brothers were very dedicated to the restaurant, working there from the start, and they pretty much only took off for military service during the war or for family vacations. And um, Daniel's son, Dan Jr., recalled that his dad was a great storyteller and that growing up in the restaurant, it was amazing to watch the many different generations come in and talk to his dad. So the time came and the Pompilio brothers decided to retire and they sold to the Matze family in 1982. So this ushered in a new era just before the 50th anniversary of the restaurant. And Frank uh, Matze and his brother Peter co-owned along with Carmen Argento, who was their uncle. And the brothers are pictured here, both of them on the left and then um, Frank is on the right. And Pompilio's made its movie debut in 1988 um, when a scene from Rain Man was filmed in the restaurant. And um, Boone County Police are with Tom Cruise and Dustin Hoffman during part of the filming for the movie. And then on the right, co-owner Carmen Argento is pictured. 
and they were um, unveiling a sculpture in the restaurant commemorating the scenes that were filmed there. And this is the restaurant as it looked in 2004. One of the things that the Matze family did during their ownership was um, they developed a line of Pompilio sauce and food products, um, which were sold at Rimki Markets, and they did that in 2006. And they also held a number of celebrations over the years, including a three-day celebration commemorating the restaurant's 80th anniversary. And it's now operated by a second generation of the Matze family and continues to be an important um, landmark in Newport. And this is a photo of Mike and Helen Wong in their restaurant, Oriental Walk. And Mike Wong worked as a salesman in Hong Kong before um, bringing his family to America. In 1972, he received approval to immigrate, and then he began working in the kitchen of his cousin's restaurant, The Dragon Inn, which was located in Cincinnati. And he lived here for about a year before returning to Hong Kong to be with his wife and two daughters. And he spent a couple of years there working. Um, he saved money and then worked on completing paperwork to be able to immigrate with his whole family. And they came to America together in 1975. And he continued to work at the Dragon Inn and eventually began bartending there as well. Um, and after a couple of years, he opened the first Oriental Walk restaurant in Edgewood in 1977. And he chose Northern Kentucky as the market because the area had such limited Asian food options at the time. And the Wongs then opened the Excelsior restaurant on Buttermilk Pike in, in um, 1987. And a few years later, in 1991, he closed the Edgewood restaurant and changed the Excelsior to Oriental Walk. And by the following year, they had three locations in business, um, Buttermilk Pike, one in Fort Thomas, and then a small operation in Florence Mall. And when he opened the restaurant, um, the only days that they were closed annually were on Thanksgiving, Christmas, and the 4th of July. And in a 2004 interview with the Kentucky Post, Mr. Wong spoke about how much the 4th of July meant to him as a naturalized American citizen, and he said this is truly an immigrant's country. They give everybody an equal opportunity, and this country was founded by families. They made it what it is, the best country in the world. In 2003, he went to Washington, D.C. and was awarded Businessman of the Year by the National Republican Congressional Committee's Business Advisory Council. And he had also hosted events for Democratic U.S. House candidate Nick Clooney. Um, the Wong's restaurants have enjoyed a lot of success over the years, and they've become an important part of Northern Kentucky's restaurant history. And this is the Mike Fink restaurant, and it was the area's first floating restaurant. Um, the boat began its life in 1942, and it was known as the John W. Hubbard. And in um, 1967, it was purchased by Captain John Beatty, and it was his idea to convert the boat into a restaurant, and it operated on the Cincinnati side under his ownership. And he named the restaurant for the famous keelboat captain and brawler, Mike Fink. And Beatty was forced to move it from its home on the Ohio side of the river um, to the Covington shore, and after it was moved, it was sold to Ben and Shirley Bernstein, who were already known for the restaurant in Southgate, which was called El Greco. So they purchased it um, in 1977, and with their sons Jim and Alan, they built it into an immensely popular restaurant. And they figured, since the boat wasn't going to New Orleans, that they'd bring New Orleans to Covington. So it became well known as one of the first local restaurants to emphasize seafood, and this included a raw bar featuring oysters, crab legs, and shrimp. And they designed um, a Mississippi River-style menu. And before they opened, their son Alan spent several weeks in New Orleans, and he learned to cook the latest popular dishes there. And the restaurant enjoyed a number of successful years. However, the boat eventually needed a lot of upgrades, and it received $500,000 in work um, and in a new hull, and then the economy tanked in 2008. So um, estimates stated that the boat would need $3 million in additional work to make it restaurant worthy again. And as Alan Bernstein said, that's a lot of crab legs to sell. So um, along with the changing, um, 
changing environment and um, the move to smaller um, trends towards smaller boutique style restaurants, they decided to make the restaurant's closure permanent. And that ended an era of greater Cincinnati's um, dining history. And then, as previously mentioned, the Bernstein family operated another restaurant, El Greco. And this restaurant was located in Southgate and was opened about 1968. And Ben and Shirley Bernstein quit their jobs with a steakhouse and they had purchased the restaurant. And at the time, it featured one of the largest menus of any restaurant in the greater Cincinnati area. And it was decorated in a Spanish motif and one room of the restaurant showcased Mr. Bernstein's collection of pre-Columbian art and the Spanish American dishes at the restaurant were the result of the family um, having lived in South America for four years. And along with these dishes, they also served other cuisines from around the world, um, including Swiss fondue, Ecuadorian ceviche, Middle Eastern shish kebab, African lobster tails, and American steaks. Montoya's is another establishment with a place in Northern Kentucky's restaurant history. And um, this Fort Mitchell restaurant was established in the 1980s. And in the photo on the left, Max Montoya, former player for the Cincinnati Bengals and partner of the restaurant, is standing next to um, Socorro Ramirez. And then in the next photo, Socorro Robles, the cook, and Maria Almanza, the co-owner, are pictured. And in a 1987 um, newspaper review of the restaurant, it was described as informal with stucco-like walls, a glittering sombrero, and a few simple Mexican pottery vessels. And on one wall is a montage of Bengals photos. And on Friday and Saturday evenings, Carlos Flores, a waiter and entertainer, would pull out his guitar and sing romantic Mexican love songs and dance tunes like La Bamba. Next, we'll move over to Florence, to the Kentucky Grill, and this business was operated by sisters Hilda and Katie Ramler, starting in about 1954. And when they were interviewed for a piece in the Kentucky Post, Hilda said, There are some men who eat breakfast, lunch, breakfast and lunch here, and then they bring their families for supper and eat the special again. So many of the customers were regulars, and it was noted that the food was consistently good. And um, Hilda said, you have to start out with good ingredients to have good food. We've always paid extra money for quality, whether it's the oil we deep fry in or the meat we cook. And we use half and half in the coffee. Most restaurants serve that stuff that has never seen a cow, Hilda added. And the restaurant was probably most famous for its smoked country ham, which was cured at a local farm 18 to 24 months before it was cut. And a breakfast at the restaurant could include country ham, eggs, and home fries. And every day a special was served from 11 a.m. until it ran out. And the Ramblers would try to make enough to serve at least a little bit of the, of the um, dinner crowd. And an example of the special list at the restaurant during a typical week would include pork steak, baked meatloaf, skillet fried chicken, Swiss steak, baked halibut, and spaghetti and meatballs. And this is a photo of guests enjoying a meal at the Beehive Tavern in Augusta in 1993. And this restaurant, located in a 1790s row house, was built by James Armstrong, and it's listed on the National Register of Historic Places. And in its long history, um, the building has served as many things, including an apothecary, a grocery store, tavern, inn, and a boarding house. And it began as a restaurant in 1985, by Luciano Morel, who went by the name Sean. And he's of Italian descent, but was born and raised in Cuba until the age of 14. And that was when he was adopted by German parents from Cincinnati. And they later trained him at a German restaurant. And that's how he got his start in the business. And the main dining room um, features a great view of the river. And Rosemary Clooney used to come in and eat regularly. And she had a favorite chair at the restaurant that she would sit in, and it was a Bobak Windsor. And the business was purchased by Lance and Lilani uh, Bates in 2017, and it's still serving guests in Augusta. And the Greyhound Tavern is the last restaurant that we'll take a look at, and it's located in Fort Mitchell and began in 1921 as the Dixie Tea Room, 
and was owned by John Hauer, a horse owner and breeder. And the Dixie Tea Room also contained an ice cream parlor. Um, in the 1930s, Alf Frisch took ownership and he changed the name to the Greyhound Grill. And this was to honor um, his brother, who was a successful Greyhound dog trainer. And along with cha changing the name, he applied for the restaurant's first liquor license in 1939. And a 1940 newspaper advertisement um, for the restaurant said that the establishment featured chicken, fish, and all kinds of sandwiches. And more recently, the name was changed from Greyhound Grill to Greyhound Tavern and has become a Fort Mitchell landmark. And I hope that you enjoyed this glimpse into the history of some of our Northern Kentucky restaurants. Um, for more photos of other Northern Kentucky restaurants and historical sites, visit our Faces and Places database. And it's at facesandplaces.kenlibrary.org. If you have any questions, please contact us by phone at 859-962-4070, by email at history at kentonlibrary.org, or stop by the local history and genealogy department at the Covington branch. Thanks for watching.